Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today we got how to use a jaw test uh, software for uh, reading codes and diagrams and how to clear codes and if it actually works with forklifts or not. So I had a few people reach out to me and ask me if it actually works. So today we are working on a heister. And so if you go to the jaw test software, you go down to material handling equipment and then you go to heister and you go to the model number. So we're working on H50 FT and so you go to H40 to H70 FT and then you do a system scan. All right. I'm going to show you guys how to actually connect to a forklift later on. But uh, yeah, here are all the codes that are read. Um, the, f the top codes I wouldn't really pay attention to, more of the body computer uh, codes. And the problem with this forklift is that it doesn't want to start. When you turn the key switch, everything um, turns on but once you turn it to actually start it it doesn't do anything because um, it's got a few codes I'll, I'll show you guys what it's doing later um, so yeah uh, basically here are all the codes that it, 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 uh, it pulled up and so I'm gonna go over how to clear the codes how to save the codes um, diagrams and what else this goes over All right, so how to save a scan. You go to the bottom right, right there. It's going to ask you, do you want to save the results of the system scan? We're going to click accept. And then we're going to go to customize model or vehicle list, either one. Um, so down you go to add new vehicle on the bottom right. And then uh, it's going to already pull up the model number for you and the material handling, all right? And the brand is Heister. You can put whatever other info you want, but uh, yeah. Um, that's basically it. You click on the check mark and then the data has successfully saved. So once you go back to it later on, you don't have to actually connect to the forklift again. You can just go to save vehicle list and it'll bring it up. Now here on uh, diagrams, um, it's going to show you a picture of what the actual computer, the ECM looks like. Okay. Um, not every single one of them does this. And again, I'm only showing you what the heister uh, is telling me. It may be different with every model and um, brand of forklift, okay? Now here, uh, we're gonna continue with diagrams, all right? And we're gonna go to the first one. Now you can click between several different types of diagrams, um, but we're just gonna click on the first one, which is the control unit, ECM. And so, uh, engine management control unit, as you can see there, but depending on which one you click on all right it's going to show you the diagram uh, depending on the ECM that you choose okay now we're going to scroll down on this side here on the left and we're going to go down to starter motor just for example and then it's going to show you on the diagram itself where it's located all right so you don't have to guess what each individual one thinks. Now then we're going to go to cabin suspension relay. Just as an example. There it is highlighted. That's the starter motor. If we click to a different uh, one, it's going to show us where it is and where it's located. There's the ca cabin suspension relay. Okay. That's on the uh, diagrams. Alright, next we're going to go over how to clear the codes. And then, so if we go to the bottom right, or sorry, not the bottom right, the middle right, you're going to see it says clear fault codes. All right. And then you get to select only the systems with the fault codes or all systems. So we're going to clear all systems. I'm going to wait till it loads. Um, and basically, it's going to take a little while, not, not too long, but basically it's going to go through every system that we've scanned. And it's going to clear all the codes. And once it's clear all the codes, we can restart the scan if we want to and just to double check or we can go back and log off and just run the machine for a while and then you can do another scan and see if everything um, has been cleared so fault codes clearing has been completed and then we're going to restart the scan it's going to ask you if you want to do that we're going to say yes we're going to go on the top right and then we're going to scan and it's going to do another uh, system scan plus uh, code reading All right, so system has been cleared and uh, no no more codes are showing up. Now the next thing to do would be to turn the forklift on and make sure that the display doesn't show any codes. But like I mentioned earlier, 
the problem with this forklift it doesn't start because the display is actually messed up so I'm gonna show you guys what codes those were and um, how I found that out alright so here's the main reason why this forklift isn't starting you see here on the bottom uh, right here the left arrow button component stuck and right arrow bonnet button component stuck alright this is the body computer the VSM and so what's going on is um, there's buttons on the actual display on the heisters and on the yales and uh, for example it, there's a button for the light this kind of shows you where the when the fault came on and how many hours it came on Okay. now when um, you go to turn the key switch on it'll say left arrow button uh, pressed release to turn on right and it won't let you release it if you go to fault code troubleshooting this really isn't going to give you that much information it's just going to give you a basic um, understanding of what that uh, not the actual code what the actual code means but what intermittent or contact problem is it's super general um, I mean it may help you it may not I don't know but it doesn't give you an actual troubleshooting guide for that code if that makes sense it's just a recommendation type of thing what intermittent means what uh, contact problem is okay so again left arrow button component stuck and the right arrow button component stuck so for those of you that know that know about heisters and yells if any button is pressed on when you're trying to turn the key switch it's not gonna let you turn it on it's super annoying uh, but it is what it is so basically there is no other way of fixing this other than replacing that part of the display um, we also have a bank one oxygen sensor uh, code but that's not super important um, so yeah right here you see those buttons right there there's a light button and there's an up and down it's actually not up and down it's left and right and those are the things that are stuck right here where my finger is so the only other way to fix this is to just replace the whole entire display the customer didn't want to do that so we're gonna put in another key switch uh, after marking key switch and just rewire everything so that they can turn the forklift on but uh, yeah next up we're gonna go over how to actually connect to a forklift or material handling uh, equipment alright so here we got our laptop and we're gonna be clicking on jaw test here and it's gonna take a minute to load up but uh, for the most part this is gonna be a general how to connect to a forklift because um, I don't have a forklift in front of me right now next time I uh, have to use it I'll definitely uh, film it for you guys but um, yeah jaw test uh, will open up and um, we're gonna go over basically how to connect to each different uh, forklift and the connectors and all the stuff that comes with uh, this package I got this package actually from diesel laptops is where I bought it from so once you open up the software you can see you have uh, off highway equipment agricultural and you got commercial vehicle as well as marine so the only package that I bought was the material handling and you get you get to use it on scissor lifts on boom lifts as well as telehandlers and uh, we're gonna be going on the forklift side of it so once you go to forklift you have your list of all the equipment that you can uh, do uh, you can see them all for yourself there but we're gonna be going on heister because that's the one that we've been talking about in this video but here's just a quick uh, rundown of the the list of uh, makes alright so we're gonna be clicking on heister once you click on the make of the forklift it's gonna show you on the left hand side what kind of series okay depending on the model we're going to be going on H series because we're working on an H50 FT. And we're going to scroll all the way down until we get to our desired model. Okay. It's going to be H40 H70 FT. So any model between H40 and H70 FT. Double click on that. And here we are. Okay. Now on the left hand side you're going to have to select whether you want a system scan or a frequent test or you can click each individual maybe you just want to test the hydraulic side of things or whatever. Now before you actually scan you're going to click this part right here it's going to tell you how to connect to it okay. It's going to give you a little diagram right here connection diagram alright. It's going to tell you GDC, JDC 
plus JDC 557A9, which is the connector for the heister. And it gives you a picture of where to connect. And then here's the picture of the connectors itself. And that right there is the power supply that goes to the battery. All right. Now, I'm going to show you here all the different types of connectors. This is what uh, came with diesel laptops, the package that I bought. Um, we're going to go over the Heister one, okay? So the first connector is this one here. It looks like an, uh, an OBD2 cable. And then that connects to the actual jaw test um, software uh, box, all right? I'm going to show you here in a second. So here's the box that actually has the software in it. And then this part right here connects to your laptop, your USB, connects to your laptop. And then that first connector that I showed you, it's going to connect here. All right. Now from there, we're going to find our Yale and Heister connector, which is this one. Okay. And pretty simple. That just connects to the OBD2 uh, connector that we were talking about earlier. just like so and then the power supply is going to go on this left hand one which is right here and then that connects to the battery positive and negative and that's pretty much it then you turn your key switch on and you run the scan and that's about it now I'm going to show you guys all the other connectors that it comes with in case you're you know considering buying this uh, package um, it doesn't come with every single connector on there, but uh, it comes with a bunch. This is just a, an extension cable for the one that we just went over. Um, it also comes with, uh, this is the power supply uh, bag. Now this also comes with um, your uh, Deutsch engine uh, diagnosis cable. This is for like telehandlers, use a lot of Deutsch. Deutsch, whatever you say that. Uh, it also comes with Cat and Perkins diagnostic cable and your Kubota. Um, a lot of the Kubotas are used on your piggybacks and stuff like that. Caterpillar is also used on piggybacks. Um, this is <clears throat> your backbone diagnostic cable. This is similar to the high steering yo. You have your uh, nine pin cable here. Uh, this is your uh, Zappy controller diagnostic cable. Uh, Toyota's use Zappy. Um, I forget who else uses Zappy. I don't know if it's Clark or I remember. Um, yeah, this is your uh, uh, nine-pin cable connectors, and then uh, you also have your five-pin. Uh, this one here is your Kubota diagnostic cable. Uh, again, this is used for like uh, piggybacks. Um, I think the new Doosons have Kubota engines, uh, may be mistaken. This here is your Curtis diagnostic cable. This is uh, mainly used on crowns. Um, I work on a lot of crowns, so this one uh, is going to be handy. Next is, uh, I think this is Cat and Perkins. I could be wrong. Uh, yeah, I think I'm wrong. I forget what that one's for. Uh, this here is your Caterpillar diagnostic cable. I've used this one already. I made a YouTube YouTube short about this one. It didn't really give me much information, to be honest. It just gave me a lot of live data, but it was able to read a code, but it didn't tell me what the code was. But it did read the code. Um, this here is called a multi-pin connector. This one is used, uh, for example, a lot of LPG gas Toyotas. You're gonna have to use this multi-pin. This allows you to connect to any single or every single um, material handling equipment you want to without having to actually buy the connector. Because sometimes, uh, depending on the model of the forklift to make, it may not come with an actual connector, okay? This is the uh, material handling Toyota connector. Uh, this one I recommend you guys get as well because this, I work on a lot of Toyotas and uh, for Toyota electrics, like reach trucks, uh, pallet jacks, all that kind of stuff, you're gonna need this one here. Okay, I'm not sure if this will actually work with Raymond's. Um, I'm going to have to let you guys know in the future. But yeah, the multi-pin is uh, definitely needed. Um, Alright, so I'm going to show you guys real quick how to use the multi-pin connector for uh, just a quick example. So um, you're going to have to 
we're gonna have to back out of here where it says heister and we're gonna have to go to toyota because toyota only lets you use at least for the lpg you can only use the multi-pin there's not an actual connector they don't have one yet maybe in the future they're gonna have one i don't know so we're gonna back out of here and we're gonna go down to toyota and when we click toyota we're gonna click on it doesn't really matter what model you click on but we're gonna just click on a modern one like an 8 series like an fg uh, C, like a cushion um, gas one. Uh, so we're gonna go down on the left hand side till we get to 8FG series right here. And then we're gonna click on uh, 8FG C30 just for an example. Alright, so remember we always click on the actual plug right here where it says connect on the right just to see what we have to use to connect. And as you can see, it only gives us the options of multi pin on the top right hand side. So here's tells you the location of the diagnostic cable. You can see a video of it, but I'm not connected to the internet. But yeah, it tells you where it's connected. So it only gives us the options of multi-pin. All right. So if we want to carry out the, the functions of the multi-pin, you have to be in expert mode. This kind of just goes into, you don't really need to be here. This is just showing you what it offers so yeah we're gonna be on multi pin and now it tells you right here on the left hand side pin 8 and pin 9 okay that's your can high and can low so if you see the di the pin out diagram you got 1 through 17 so you find pin 8 and pin 9 which is uh, right over here and then uh, we use our connector and uh, pin 8 is gonna go with A which is the yellow one and pin 9 is going to go with uh, pin C, which is, I think, blue. I'm going to show you here in a second. So pin 8 is A, and it goes with JP, JTP1, which is right here. So you're going to use these, these two connectors with uh, color-coded A and C. And then you're going to put it on pin 8 and pin 9. On any connector you use, this is this may all just be too much information at once, but you see how the colors are right there. Any any forklift you connect to, you're basically just connecting to can high and can low. Those are your main connections to your ECM. Um, so yeah, that's basically it for the multi pin. Ho hopefully that makes sense. Later on, I'm gonna try to make a better explanation and try to. Um, uh, do an actual video of me connecting with using the multi pins and maybe that'll help you guys out all right guys thank you for watching uh, let me know in the comments if uh, this helped or not or if you guys had experience with jaw test let me know and uh, leave it down in the comments um, the more I use it the more I'm gonna keep trying to make these videos and uh, help you guys out uh, like I said I haven't used it with every single type of model or brand of forklift but as of right now it's it's helped me so far so um i think i've got my money's worth and uh yeah thank you guys uh like comment and subscribe